welcome back to another episode of For Your Distraction. I'm one of your hosts. My name is Adam, and sitting, and I did, I, I hit the speedometer thing, the uh, the mile counter in my car when I was passing through Odom- West Middlesex. Yeah, the old, yeah, the odometer. Uh, it wasn't the actual odometer. It's the thing that counts. Um, yeah, yeah, the trip, trip. The yeah, trip yeah, yeah, but the, you know, the digital yeah. one. Yeah, I uh, I did that, and I figured out it's about five or six miles from my house how far you live so sitting about five or six miles away is scott how's it going scott hey you know what one foot in front of the other adam that's all we can do as you can plainly tell for those of you that did not tune into our last episode you should check that one out if you want to feel depressed or you want to listen to a couple people talk about shit they don't really know what they're talking about um we are doing home uh, episodes. We are doing online recording episodes because we are observing the social distancing order that is going on in the country at the moment. Yes, sir. Um, you know, I listened to it. I listened to the last episode. I, I, it sounded pretty good. I was cons- I wasn't worried about you because you're the one. You're producing everything. You're the tech guy. You've got your microphone in front of you. But I'm recording it out of the speaker in my iPhone. So I thought my sound was going to be a little choppy, and actually, no, it sounded great. So I was I was impressed by the way it turned out. Yeah, so. if, if I have something to say about Apple, they typically sometimes make a fairly decent uh, microphone for their phone. So I guess that's something I could say about them. Um, there you go. Last episode, for those that did not tune into it, uh, just a basically quick, brief synopsis of that. We basically talked about eighty percent of the show about the Corona. Because that's like the big hot topic of things to talk about in this world right now. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that was our thing. So we're going to try to avoid talking about that as much as possible. I mean, it's bound to come up because it's what's going on in life today. Exactly. I mean, having. But I don't want to have. I don't want to have a whole show. Up- based around it like right. last week so i mean having said that uh, there is like one specific corona topic i do want to talk about that i want to bring up um oh. well actually a couple uh one is uh did you see that they're talking about uh giving people money uh basically oh, they, money yeah they took out a shit who's the they money. the government they took out which the, government the federal government they, okay. They took out a shit ton of money apparently, and they're talking about since people have to are out of work, and there are some businesses that are not paying their employees uh, whenever they get laid off from this. On top of, I believe they can get an unemployment, but I guess everybody in the country, um, I think it's under a certain threshold how much they make, is getting a, like a flat like basically check from the government. It's like a thousand dollars, twelve hundred dollars, or I don't even think the number has been decided yet. Um, but apparently that is going to be happening just as like a way of like, okay, while everything's shut down and while things this till we get things under control, you know, let's give everybody some money so that at the very least, maybe like a week's worth of bills can be paid for or maybe more depending on how many bills you have, which I think is very awesome. You know, I do you, would I like was gonna, some I was, money. I was going to interject. Uh, do you support that decision? I absolutely support free money. Uh, who doesn't this is that's essentially what this is i mean you i'm assuming at some what? point we're it, gonna have to pay it, it back because it's it, gonna have it to be through sounds, taxes it sounds to me a lot like socialism adam it sounds like it yeah um yeah right i mean <coughs> and, and trump is trump is okay with this i uh, you know what it's 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 a funny meme and it's a funny thing to joke about and you're not wrong in the sense of yeah people that don't like free stuff are more than willing to take free money um i will say this um not playing devil's devil's advocate but just in general saying there's a difference between what we as people are asking for versus what they're the government is doing this is happening because of like a state kind of like a state of the emergency kind of thing it's not like they're just doing it so I guess there's like a little bit of a difference, but it's like light socialism, I guess. I just I just find it entertaining when, you know, we're in the midst of election right now. I, everything's kind of been put on hold with uh, everything going on. But I find it very entertaining that, uh, you know, former candidate Andrew Yang and um, Bernie Sanders, who's still candidate, they both suggested, you know, mm-hmm giving americans like a thousand dollars like doing this and the right conservatives just 
absolutely lost their mind when those two guys suggested this, calling it socialism, calling it the worst. Okay, and in, now in Trump fairness. is doing the same thing, and you know it's okay when he does it. So in, it's just it's just a hypocrisy. In fairness to the whole Bernie and Yang thing, they were talking about giving like a universal basic income, and that would right. be a monthly thing. Every single right. month, Americans receive this money. This is a one-time thing. They're doing it just as like a like an almost like an economic. It's the same thing that Obama did when he uh, shot, basically gave everybody. Oh like, yes, what, was it like yeah, five hundred dollars or something like that. It was like that's basically what this is a stimulus the stimulus boost. money. Which which again, the right was absolutely livid. When President Obama did the stimulus for everyone, right. they thought that was socialism, and and yet here we are. It just it just shows the hypocrisy. Yeah, and, it's it's like I said, it's not the same as Bernie and Yang, but it is it is a form of socialism. But this is like this is more like a state of the emergency kind of thing. I don't think they're doing it like to try to sway socialist voters. I think they're doing it honestly because it's a people are losing their jobs people are losing their freaking minds out there and it's like we got to calm people down hey let's tell them we're going to give them you know a thousand dollars just here's a thousand dollars just to kind of tie you over get some groceries get some emergency stuff whatever you need just kind of like tie you over at least for a week until we can figure everything out will one thousand dollar check fix everything for you me yeah i'm fine well here's the thing i'm no i mean i mean if you get a thousand dollar check in the mail are you good to go are you set then like you'll, be, you'll be cool you'll be cool i'll be cool or, for like uh i mean i i am currently paying rent at the moment um okay people people that listen to the show know that i'm um, staying and helping my mother at the moment so i'm staying with her right now but i do give her money so a thousand dollars would cover that plus all my other bills and i'd have a little bit left over for uh groceries for the that month, would like, that would like a little that bit. would like forever that would help you like, like for like the month yeah oh for the month okay that's what i mean that, okay. that's what i'm saying oh, for the month mo- for the mo- so that's how okay what about next month no it wouldn't obviously oh, it's gone it wouldn't help you so you'll still be struggling next month right uh if i did not have a way out yeah i'm being facetious now. i know you're being this facetious is what, this I is know. why this is why i'm saying um what bernie and yang are saying just because we're having a hard time right now doesn't mean the hard time is going to go away next month or the month after that or the month after that. No, but I think the they're banking on there's like people. There's people who don't have health insurance. There's people who are living on the street. Many of them are veterans. Many of them are kids. There's people who are starving to death out there. Our, the economy is not good in our country. I mean, rich people are doing well, but that doesn't mean the economy is doing well. So I strongly support the universal income of a thousand dollars a month that both Yang and Bernie said. And and I think that would go a long way to help people out. So, yes, I support the $1,000 a month. And I'm glad Trump's doing it, but he's not doing enough. Like, this $1,000 is going to come in for me. It's going to be great. It's going to help. And then it's going to be gone. I'm going to be right back to where we are. Yeah. I mean, I'm. <laughs> it's not going to affect me for the most part because I'm – I was lucky enough. I my after Governor Wolf of Pennsylvania did the order of non life supporting uh, businesses yes. need to close. Um, my where I work at the college finally decided to say, hey, you know what? Uh, for the next week, don't even come in. Don't worry about it. And then we're going to email you about any, what's going to be going on after that week. And I'm lucky in the sense that they said that we were still going to get paid. So I still get paid my forty hours even though I'm not going to be there next week. So that's uh, good on you, Westminster College. Westminster, good fucking on you. Way to go. Um, But I'm I'm lucky in the sense that I'm glad they're doing that too, but they always, they could pay you more. So there's I am fully aware of the fact they could pay more, but they also didn't have, they also didn't have to do this. They could have easily said, you're not coming in next week because of the governor's orders and we can't pay you. So they easily could have said that at the same time. So, you know, props to props for, you know, doing something at the very least. But people at Westminster College, the students, they're still paying tuition because they're still taking classes online. Yeah, and from what so I understand. So the college is still making money. Yeah. They're, they're not, not making, making as much anything. as they used to because they, they're going to have to, um, the room and board they would have made uh, over the next month and a half. They're not going to see that money. They're not going to see money coming in for food from like the cafeteria and stuff like that so there's there's forgive still, me if i don't shed a tear for them they're still they're still there. losing some money because of that 
they're not losing as much as tuition, but they're still losing some money. So there is that, you know. Um, but yeah, I, I'm lucky enough to be quarantined. You're going to hear me cough occasionally. I don't have the corona, by the way, just letting everybody know. I do not have it. Um, my sister got bronchitis. Like, it was a scary thing because my sister got bronchitis like the week before everything went to shit. Um, and then she kind of gave me a little bit and I didn't get like full blown bronchitis, but I got a little sick and I spent the past week just freaking out. Like I, t I called off sick a couple days, but I spent the past week in my head freaking out. Like, um, do I have the Corona? I must have Googled coronavirus symptoms about 50 times this past week, just trying mm. to see, compare like, okay, is this what I, should I go get tested? Like what's going on? Like, is there tests available for me to do it? There is not. Oh shit. What am I going to do? So I'm, I don't have it though. I'm fully confident that I don't because I've been sick for almost a week, but it's been very light. I haven't, you know, been bedridden for the most part, uh, the way that they're talking about that people have it. So I'm good. I'm good right now. Oh, I'm, I'm very glad to hear that. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I, but besides that, I mean, is there anything else newsworthy that you want to talk about, uh, the Corona wise? I do know I heard rumor, but I heard that there was a a person who might be diagnosed with corona in the uh mercer county area in hermitage yeah i i heard that rumor too um and up till now we haven't had a single case in our county yet we haven't um there's been one confirmed case in butler county of pennsylvania which is near us and there's been i think two or three confirmed cases in trumbull county ohio which is just west of where we are yes um I, I heard a rumor too um but <clears throat> it's just rumors man and that's the thing we last i heard and this could have changed we have five hospitals in our county here none none are very big hospitals they're all like five small community hospitals but not a single one of them had any testing kits yeah i did hear about that too so if there's people who were ill or people who were sick or whatever was going on they uh didn't test them well they have to if the, if they're bad enough i think what they do is they have to swab their nose and then they have to send out for t the test so they have to like send it out somewhere like figure out a place that has tests and then send it to them and they test them i think yes it but it, it, at the same time even those are getting backlogged yeah and it's only going to be – they're only – because of that, they're only testing, like you said, people who are bad enough. Those people who are bad enough also have to be in a high-risk population. Right. An elderly person or have a pre-existing condition, something along those lines. So a regular, younger, healthy person that may have the symptoms, they could swab them and send it out, but they're not going to. Oh, I believe it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um. But yeah, that that's just what. I, other than that, I don't really have any news for it or anything. So, do you really have any details? Do you have any details for... of the person you heard that in Mercer County has it? No, I have no oh, okay. details whatsoever. It's just just a rumor okay. that I heard. Um, yeah, I'll believe it when I see it for sure. I I wouldn't be surprised. I I'm honestly more surprised that we don't have at least one case. To be honest, with we you. probably do, Adam. We probably have more than one. It's just they're not going to get tested for it, so we'll never know for sure. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, that's that's Corona for this week uh, right now. I'm sure there's many, many more stories. It's really funny. I, I like to watch uh, shows like Stephen Colbert and stuff, but I can't even watch Stephen Colbert right now because he was doing for a little while um, shows from his home. Like, like he would record like just like his monologue uh, while he's like sitting by the fire or like mm -hmm. outside or something like that in his yard or whatever and it was really cool but um, he's not doing anything right now it sucks because i really enjoyed watching some stephen colbert stuff so there's a lot of a lot of things being affected one big thing i know in the entertainment industry that's being affected right now is you uh hear about and see that because of the fact that movie theaters are closed for the most part all the big releases uh, that movie studios are putting out they can't really release them because Nobody can go see him. So I think Universal was the first one to do it, and I think that others might follow suit. They're releasing their brand new movies that they would normally put in theaters as like a temporary rental that you can get on like Amazon Prime or something. So yeah. like you can see like the Invisible Disney's Man. done that too. Yeah. So but like Disney Disney did that with Frozen too, but that was like 
a new release that was going to be on Blu-ray that they just released ahead of time, but you can get it with their subscription. Like, you still have to rent it with, like, Amazon Prime, a lot of these new ones. But, like... For, like for example invisible man is like a new release that should be in theaters but like you can rent it but you have to rent it for like 15 or 20 dollars and you have like a month to watch it i think and then after you watch it you're done so they're definitely making a lot of money doing that i'm assuming um but other than that like how have you been staving off the social distance blues because i know you me it's it's honestly starting to affect me a little bit and you, and you know me i'm an introvert but not being able to like go to the gym i keep mentioning or not being able to like get out of the house or go to your house to record or even go to trivia on thursday nights like it's it's starting to get to me a little bit too right now but i mean i know you you must be like driving yourself crazy i'm pulling your hair out oh it's tough it is tough and um yeah, yeah, not we 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 go to trivia once a week. And yeah. Not being able to go to trivia has been tough, but this past week our trivia was done remotely, just like we're doing this podcast now. <laughs> they did it online through Zoom, and it was great. I actually had such a good time with that. That was enjoyable as shit. Like... It really broke up the monotony. It was fun. I mean, we sucked. Our team was lousy, but it didn't matter. Like I had such a nice time. Um, I honestly, I've been looking forward to this podcast. Like, even though, again, we're doing it remotely, but yeah, I would, I've been looking forward to this for a long time. It's the little stuff. It's the stuff you take for granted now that you really appreciate. Scooby. And plus I've, I've been watching, oh, fucking Scooby dumb. <laughs> I've been watching a whole bunch of, whole bunch of movies out. I started out thinking, oh, I'm going to get so much, so many shows watch. I've been watching some TV shows too, but I've been on a movie kick. Well, and movies yester- are easy. Yes, yesterday I watched four movies. Today I watched three, and it's I've been enjoying it. And they're they're not new movies. Well, some of them are, I guess, but most of them are just classic films that I've seen a thousand times. That I'm like, oh, I'm going to watch this. And it was great. I enjoyed it. I watched uh, Back to the Future 3 a couple days ago. You did? Yeah. I did. It was on Netflix. I saw it on there. I was like, you know what? Uh I'm going to watch this because that's fun. Yesterday, I watched four movies. I I kept with the theme, and I opened it up with the the 1995 movie Outbreak. Why would you uh, watch that movie at a time? Because I like the movie. I'm and I've always liked that movie. And with everything going on, I want to stay informed. I want to stay educated. Um, yeah, it's movie outbreak starring uh, Dustin Hoffman, Rene Russo, uh, Cuba Gooding Jr., Morgan Freeman, Kevin Spacey, uh, Donald Sutherland, Patrick Dempsey. Like it's a, there's a whole what a cast. Yeah, what a cast. And I've, as I'm watching it, I'm like, wow, okay, Dustin Hoffman's in this. Cuba Gooding Jr.'s in this, Kevin Spacey's in this. I'm like, wow, that's a that's a whole bunch of people who are never gonna work again. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. <laughs> like Kevin Spacey just by himself. I mean, I haven't seen. I don't, I don't even know if I've. I'm sure I've seen that movie once. Oh, it's um, a good film. I'm sure I've seen it once. I don't remember it though is what i'm gonna say i'm staying away from all the pandemic movies as much as i possibly can i don't want to watch that shit right now because i'm i'm like nah i'm good like that that, that's just i'm trying to watch some fun stuff or um just anything that's action just to kind of distract me a little bit because i'm stuck in the house kind of sucks um i've been watching a lot of star wars clone wars i'm pretty far into that at the moment um like late or mid like season five of that at the moment so i'm pretty far and that's kind of what i've been my big thing that i've been watching um have you other movies you've been watching anything like new that you want to talk about in particular or is it just kind of um like... oh yeah well i was gonna i was gonna do my whole list of, of stuff i watched yesterday okay. and today. yeah yeah because i was uh, it was pretty it was pretty all over the map um, Outbreak was trending in the top ten. On, it was on Netflix. Right. So I was like, wow, this is trending. And I laughed, so I watched it. The next one I watched was, it was on Disney Plus from 1978. It's the movie called The Black Hole. Did you ever see it? Maybe. 
It's uh, yeah. Anthony Perkins, Roddy McDowell. Give me like a brief synopsis of like what it's about. I, I probably so could tell it's, you. So it's, it's a space epic. There's a ship that's like a exploration vessel that goes out and they find an old ship that's been lost for like 20 years and it's trapped near a black hole and uh, you know, it's just one of those deals and they find one of the old members of that ship and he's like a crazy person and you know it, it, it revolves around the black hole and then the, the, the black hole is actually like a gateway to hell like, are you talking like about Event pretty... Horizon? no because that's the like black that's hole. Event Horizon basically well, I've never seen Event Horizon. But... I, I actually watched it a couple weeks ago um, briefly because I saw a video about it. I was like, you know, I don't know if I've ever seen the movie. And it's with, um, shit, hold on a second. It's with, uh, I know it's the, what's his name from The Matrix? Um, Mor Morpheus from The Matrix. Lawrence Fishburne. Lawrence Fishburne's in it. It also has, I'm pulling up the IMDb right now because you know me, I'm bad. It's Lawrence Fishburne. Sam Neill's in it. Um... Sam Neill. Yeah, Sam Neill's Love in that him. one. It's basically um, this story about this guy, Sam Neill, the do this professor who is like behind this creation of the ship called the Event Horizon, which is trying. He's basically trying to experiment fast ways of tra traveling across the universe, and it's basically mm -hmm. a way of like folding space on itself so that you can get from one point in the universe to the other almost instantaneously. The problem is this ship travels through like this dimension by doing it and comes back almost alive maybe possessed by a demon who knows and the crew is killed and the this lawrence fishburne's crew has to take sam Neill out and figure out what's going on and it's just a hodgepodge of demonic torture and you know just craziness that goes on you know th that kind of nonsense it's actually like not a bad watch i'm gonna say um but yeah, it's, it's of that same vein that you're talking about, of like space, oh god, hell, you know, portal and stuff like that. Oh god, we went through, we uh, traveled through hell. What was the one, um, what was the one movie where, god, I think it was, um, oh, there was like a, there was like a movie or story or something like that about the, um, the Bermuda Triangle or something like that, and it like sucks ships into it, and it's put them out into like the moon or something like that and that had something to do with like a portal through hell or some shit like that that's you'd be surprised how often that storyline kind of takes place it's really weird hmm so anyway yeah uh black hole is pretty campy uh yeah definitely dated they had like fun robots in it so that was the second one i watched then I went ahead and watched. Are you ready for this one? Oh, I watched. I watched the Wizard of Oz. That's weird. Is it weird? I mean, it's it like can... one of the most classic, iconic films of all time. Yeah, but it's like you know, I watched the Black Hole, a, a trip through hell, and stuff like that. And then I watched the Wizard of Oz. You know? Yeah, I just I watched the Wizard of Oz. It was, you know, the same <laughs> movie as ever. I I really liked the movie. I enjoyed it. So. What made you want to watch it? Um, my kids were in the room, so I had to watch something Enough family said. friendly. Enough said. Yeah. Okay. I had to watch something family friendly, and I like it, so I did. And okay. That that was it. Does it hold up? You know. Yeah, yeah. Oh my, that that movie's timeless, man. That one. Uh, yeah, that's. I'm not. That a, movie will be forever one of the classics. I'm not a huge Wizard of Oz guy. Like I'm not. No, you don't like it. I, I don't say I don't like it. I'm just not a big, you know, Wizard of Oz kind of thing. I think it's too old for me. It's way too old. I have a hard time watching old movies like that. It's way yeah, from the '30s. Yeah, like I, it's it, it it's tough for me. So um, it's gonna be a hundred years old pretty soon. Jesus Christ! Yeah. I don't, I'm not happy about that. Um, I watched. I did watch something that I know you've watched and you warned me about it because I know you thought it was a really bad movie. I watched the new Hellboy. It oh, was on I hated HBO. it. Yeah, it wasn't good. That's what I'm gonna no. say. It was not good. Um. I I have a hard time because the original Hellboy movie um, with Ron Perlman playing Hellboy, yeah. he was in a really good Hellboy. I liked him a lot. And the problem is this new guy playing uh, David Hellboy, Harbor, David Harbor, who it was uh, the sheriff in Stranger Things, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I really like him as an actor, but he did not play a good Hellboy. Like, I was not a fan of it. It was a lot of screaming and a lot of whining. 
Like, he was kind of like a whiny teenager, almost, in this movie. And it was not fun, though. Uh, well, did you ever read the Hellboy comic book? No, but I the want Dark to. The Dark Horse comic book. I books. want to really badly, because I heard they're I, good. I've, yeah, I've never read them. I've never read them. But they are, the Hellboy comic books are pretty much regarded as the most popular comic that isn't Marvel or DC. Really? Yeah. It has a cult following. People love the Hellboy comics. And I just never got into them. But when the first movie came out, the Ron Perlman one, people were angry because it really was more of an action film. <laughs> and I guess the true comic fans say it deviated too much. Um, from what I understand, the new one really stick close to the comics. Like, that's more of the Hellboy. It was very... I hate to use the word campy again, but it kind of was. It was a little campy. I mean, campy. the whole thing... Like, like Thomas Hayden Church's character? The lobster? Yeah. Like, <clears throat> what? Apparently, he has some kind of story arc in the comics. And the fact that he was... They tipped his hat to him in the movie. People loved. Again, if you talk to a Hellboy comic book fan... They could probably give you much more insight than I can. I'm just telling you stuff I've read on, like, fucking BuzzFeed or whatever. But I mean, I don't... I don't think... I think the story they were trying to tell wasn't that bad. My biggest problem was, like, the acting. I felt the actors were almost all wrong. Especially Hellboy. I don't think he... I, like I said, after Ron Perlman... I never read the comic books, as I just said. But after Ron Perlman, I thought he was a pretty fucking good Hellboy. I liked him a lot. And he was, like, a little sarcastic, pretty funny, you know, kind of snarky. And I really liked that version of Hellboy. And this version, I just... I didn't really like it that much. Um, I also felt like... Maybe the story was rushed. Like, they kept jumping from one point to the next point to the next point. Without actually trying to tell the story. So that kind of was like, all right, you're kind of rushing it for me. Also, I don't know how you feel about Milo Jovovich. Not that big a fan of Milo Jovovich. Not gonna lie, I don't, I don't like her that much. She, she has a few good things like The Fifth Element. She was good in that. I Fifth Element that. was great. Yeah, man. it's a great movie. But like, I, I don't never know got any... into the Resident Evil movies, and I know she was a big part of that franchise. Yeah, she's not that good in those. She plays. Well, they a, aren't good movies. They're, they're not. But like she plays. It seems like she's the kind of actress that plays the same character in every single movie. Why she did does. they make a? If the Resident Evil movies were so bad, why did they make like a thousand of them? Why did they make a thousand uh, Fast and Furiouses? Why did they make? Because a, it makes a ton of money in the movies. Resident Evil make, or at least early on, made a lot of money too. I'm, I'm assuming. I think the first film did okay, but I don't think any other ones did. They must have done. I at a certain point they got a little weird and campy the way the Resident Evil games got but like the the Resident Evil the first film it was it was early I mean there's the ongoing debate like why do video games mo video game movies always suck like there really hasn't been one video game <coughs> turned movie that was any good but they were able to be on the ground floor for that like the Resident Evil 1 movie was before every video game was turned into a movie. You know what I mean? Yeah, it was like they on the early end of things. So. Plus, the video game itself was still really popular when that movie came out. I mean, it's still really popular now. It, it started to lose its luster like around 5 or 6, but then they completely like redid it all and came out with Resident Evil 7, which was a... F it went from being like an action horror movie back to like a horror movie, but it was like first person. Mm -hmm. And people loved it a lot. I I didn't finish it. I made it part way through, and then I had to stop for some reason. And I want to go back and play it because it's a really good game. I played Resident Evil One for PlayStation One. <laughs> yeah, I remember that <laughs> That's one. That's the only one I ever played. I remember that one. That one. Uh, I never. That was the one Resident Evil early on that I couldn't beat. My mother beat that game. I couldn't yeah. beat that one. Um, but yeah, I, Hellboy, Mila Jovovich, not, not the biggest fan of her. Hellboy itself, not a great movie. I wish that they would have just like kept Ron Perlman and like, I will give Hellboy this. It was very violent and very adult oriented. It didn't have like a mm -hmm. PG thirteen rating. It was definitely earned its rated R. There was a lot of like you know cutting people in half and blood and gore and shit like that. So that was mm -hmm. when you're dealing with hell and demons stuff like that. That was kind of fun to see. 
But other than that, I'm going to say uh, no Hellboy. <laughs> Go back to the drawing board. Yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't a fan of that. Uh, a real cool thing about it was the first Hellboy movie, the Ron Perlman one, um, Mickey Rourke was actually supposed to play Hellboy. Really? He actually, like, because he had played um, right around the same time, I think just before it, he played Marv in Sin City. Yeah. And he did such a great job, and so they're like, oh, okay, well, let's make him be Hellboy. But it was all, I hate to say this, but it was too big of a role for him. He would flub up lines, he would screw up. He had a little bit of a substance problem back then. <laughs> no shit. So, <laughs> no shit. And when he, as Marv, it was a, you know how Sin City's broken up into the different uh, oh, anthology stories. Great storytelling. Amazing right, storytelling. Right. Ron Perlman was in that too, by the way. Who's he? He played one of the gangsters. Um, do you remember the story of the, um, fuck, the, the, the dude that was like, his storyline was, oh, he had to change his face or whatever, and, um, god, what's her name from, we're gonna talk about later, Jay and Silent Bob, what's the name of the chick from Clerks 2 who married, um, um, Rosario Dawson. Yes, Rosario character. Dawson. Rosario yeah. Dawson played the leader of that gang of like street yes, hookers, yes, and yes. he was like the love interest to her during that storyline. Whenever they went to um, to that that gangster's house, that was like putting the putting the uh, pressure on the street hookers. He was one of the gangsters there. He, okay. Yeah, he was one of the ones there. I think. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'm watching all these old classic films. Sin City might have, might have to go on my list to rewatch Dude, during the quarantine. That's a good movie. I don't know it's if really I saw. I can't movie. remember if I saw the sequel. But I oh, know that, it's bad. That's a good it's movie. Bad. The sequel's very bad. A Dame to Kill for. Yeah. yeah. Um. That, yeah, that's a good movie. I mean, but yeah. Well, Hellboy, anyway, Hellboy. I, I just remember. I just remember like Mickey Rourke was originally supposed to play Hellboy, and then he got dropped and then they added Ron Perlman and I think Ron Perlman did a pretty good job I think he did better than David Harbour so I'm looking at the cast of Sin City there's a lot of there's a lot of good shit in here there's a yeah, lot of good cast good movie. Jessica Alba I remember she has Jessica she Alba in that movie when she was on the bar My dancing god she was in her prime yes yeah, sir uh Michael Clark Duncan was in it yeah he's amazing I like him I'm going to uh rewatch that that might be tomorrow that might be tomorrow. And there was one more, and you, you just recently brought it up, and I think it was worth getting into right now. I forgot Michael Clark Duncan died. I forgot about that. Damn. Yeah, yeah Green Mile. Yeah, he died. Yeah. Um, so I had watched those three films, and it was in the evening, and I'm just sitting down on the couch, you know, being quarantined, and I get a text from you. And what was the news you told me? The news that I told you was the brand new Kevin Smith film, Jay and Silent Mob Reboot, is available Amazon Prime, just to watch. Yes, on Prime Video, and yes, I was Prime like, Video. for free. So instantly after you sent that to me, I fired it up. I when I when I sent you that text message, I was already in the middle of pushing play, right when I sent <laughs> you the text message. So and then we you sent, watched it at the same time. We were watching it. I might have been five minutes ahead of you, but we were watching it at the same time. Um, <laughs> how did you feel about that movie? Because I'm the Kevin Smith fanboy, so I'm gonna let you go first on this. Well, uh, for your information, I also am a Kevin Smith fan. Boy. Uh, do you listen to his, I, all of his podcasts and vibe everything that he does? And let me well, explain, fuck you then. Let me explain why the answer to that is no. <laughs> I was a Kevin Smith fanboy long before you. Sir. True, fair. I, That's fair. I started watching it, but after uh, Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back, Clerks Two, I liked both of those films. That's when he kind of got kind of meta in his career and started focusing really on his podcasting, which I have listened to his podcast, Adam, for your information. I just don't listen religiously like you do. That being said, then he made um, the movie Tusk and he made the movie Yoga Hosers. Gotta be honest with you, those movies were awful, man. You I really... That's, I really dislike them. That's fair. I think you. I think it's important to remember for anybody who doesn't know is that was the time when Kevin Smith became a pothead, like hardcore pothead, like smoke like three blunts a day kind of pothead. Um, 
So that's So you're saying you're saying during Clerks and Mall Rats and his early stuff, he was just a poser pothead. He was never a pothead. He was he never smoked weed those days. But his character was. Yes, his character sold weed and smoked weed, but he he was a he drank, but like like he would really like go out for beers and stuff like that with the boys, but he never smoked weed ever. Ever. Hmm. It wasn't until much later in his life that he started smoking weed. It might have been it might have been after Clerks too he, when he started smoking weed. So um I hate how fake Hollywood is. <laughs> 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 Um, but yeah, I, I I will agree with you. Tusk is a rough watch. I I'm not gonna say I liked Tusk. I will say I liked it only because it was different. And how how many stories in Hollywood and movies and stuff like that can you honestly say are different? Like most of the time when you watch a movie, it's kind of the same old movie through and through. Like we've seen that story. Tusk is one of those weird ones where you may not have never seen that fucking story, or if you have, you haven't seen it too often. So. I will give it props that it was a very unique story. I'm not gonna say it was a good one, but it was very unique. Um, same thing. I, with yoga, I, same I thing like with, Tusk better. Yoga hosers was worse. Well, yoga it's ho- it's the same thing with yoga hosers. Yoga hosers. It was also another unique movie. But once again, I as you pointed out, I listened to his podcast like There's No Tomorrow, and he talks about it all the time, especially when he's making the movies. Like I didn't make it for like adults. I made it for like teen girls. So like he's like I made it because I wanted because my daughter wanted to make a make a movie and she wanted to get into acting and obviously I'm a filmmaker so why wouldn't I make a movie for my daughter and she was like best friends with Lily Rose Depp who is Johnny Depp's daughter so she was he was like why don't we just like make a movie a teen girl movie that's like really weird and crazy and so that was like his whole motivation for doing that and I'll and I'll say that that worked because my sister really likes Kevin Smith but she's only ever really listened to like the Kevin Smith podcast like when I'm driving the car, but she really likes him a lot. Yoga Hosers might have been her first movie of Kevin Smith that she ever watched. And oh, she, boy. And she really liked it. She was like, I like this a lot. <laughs> like, she was maybe 16 or 17 at the time when she watched it. I can't remember how long ago the movie came out, but she was a couple years younger at least than she is now. But she was like, I liked it a lot. I thought it was really fun. It was a fun movie. Like, it was really cool. Ooh. So it's definitely a teen girl movie is what it is. That's, that's Now, he was supposed to make a third movie in his Canadian trilogy, Moose Jaws. And yeah. it, got, it got shelved, right? I think I – don't. I haven't heard anything about it recently. I think he still wants to do it. It's just a matter of, you know, after the heart attack and everything like that, I think he's trying to trying to wrap up the View Askewverse maybe like he's trying to wrap up you know like jay and silent bob and clerks and stuff like that so that's why he wants to do like a clerks three and he's like writing a script for new mall rats apparently um mm. clerks three and mall rats two are both yeah yeah so he's possibilities he's, yeah so it, well he's been recently talking about like he's he's in the middle of writing a script for mall rats so mm. and he's doing clerks three at the moment so <coughs> like writing the problem it, with so. those are i i believe Miramax owns the rights to Clerks and Mallrats. Yeah. And he owns the rights to Jay and Silent Bob. So that's why he had more leeway with with this film. Well, I think if one of the things he talked about, and I think this is true, um, I think he said that he wanted to do he wanted to do like his Canadian adventure movies and stuff like that. And like Mm -hmm. Miramax is like um, okay, uh, I, th- I think it was like something like Miramax is like, okay, well, you know, we'll let you, you know, take some time to do that and stuff like that as, or we'll give you money to do that kind of stuff. If you like promise to do a clerks three, like if you sign that says, Hey, I'll do a clerks three and stuff like that. I think it's, I think I remember talks of that. I don't know how true that is. Maybe that didn't actually happen. Maybe he just like mentioned that's what might've happened. I don't remember. Um, but yeah, like those ones were definitely weird and out there. Um, so that those are things but this is his kind of almost his return to the view askew verse this movie right here jay and silent bob reboot um right. which had elements of the past but also like elements of his current writing i think mixed together like his current attitude which i think was really cool because it was just as silly as the original jay and silent bob strike back oh oh but real quick before we get into the talking about the movie itself uh, you said he wants to wrap up the view as few 
universe. That's what I think he wants to do. That's what I think he wants to do. No, you're right. But he's tried to do that. I remember when Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back came out in 2001, 2002, that was supposed to be it for Jay and Silent Bob as characters. That was like, they finally got, they finally got their own movie about them. Whereas all the movies before that, they were not the main characters. They were secondary characters. Yeah. You know, they were subplots to what the main story of the movie was. So for them to get their own movie about them was supposed to be it. It's supposed to wrap them up. Well, then we got Clerks 2, which I believe he did that because he was happy that Jason Mewes was able to get clean because he had a real bad drug problem for oh, a yeah, while. Yeah. So he rewarded his one of his best friends, Jay. He got clean, so he said, I'll make a movie and put you in it. And so that's where we got uh, Clerks 2, which exists in that universe. I guess Zack and Miri are in that universe too, aren't they? Um, he is talked about on the podcast because I think you're talking about the first, basically one of the first scenes of the movie with, uh, Randy St. Randy. Randy Brandon St. Randy. Ra- Brandon St. Randy. He, yeah. um, he talked about on the podcast and he said, I guess you could technically say Zach and Mir are a part of the universe, but he's like, I didn't ask to, you know, make them part of the universe. I just kind of did it like, because, <laughs> um, Zach and Mir make a pointer is not is not his property he just kind of like did it right but he loved the randy saint uh uh brandon Brandon saint randy Randy. character i I did too i I keep fucking up the name but he he loved that character so much that he decided he was gonna get he he's a good friend with justin long and Mm -hmm. he decided to bring him into the movie and he's like i want you to play that character but we're not gonna like name you that character because legally i can't name you brandon saint john or uh, Randy Saint, whatever. I guess. Are you okay? <laughs> I can't. I have a hard time remembering it's Brandon that Brandon Saint Randy. Brandon Saint Randy, the gay and guy. It's the gay guy. It's the gay porn star. It's important to get it right because it's, it's a double entendre of the name. That's I why know. It's funny. I know. Okay. Um, but like he, his big thing was like, we're gonna. I'm gonna have you play this character, <laughs> but legally we can't name you this character because i don't own this character and he he never says he, he never says that's his name he never mentions his name at all like it's, it's but great. in the credits in the credits if you go to the internet movie database just this long character is listed as brandon st randy which is awesome because it was a great character it was one of the funniest yeah. characters in zach and mary make a porno oh honestly um, absolutely this, this whole thing and the cool thing about zach and mary make a porno it can exist in this universe because everything with Jay and Silent Vault, Jay and Silent Bob, exists in either New Jersey or Illinois, yeah, or California. I guess when they go to Hollywood twice. So New Jersey, Illinois, or California, whereas Zach and Mary make a porno are in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, the whole time. Yeah. So it's not weird that those characters don't intertwine. You know. Yeah, they're practically down the road from each other. In terms of the, oh, the yeah, country right. is so, um, but no, like it, it was really fun. The if you go to the internet movie database, the list, the list of the amount of people that are in this movie is immense. He mm-hmm. had so many people, so many big names too. Like Val Kilmer comes in there at the end. Yeah, that was really amazing. Chris Hemsworth, Chris Hemsworth as himself, like that's awesome too. He had one of the funniest cameos I've ever seen. Just that hologram version of him. <laughs> <laughs> I can't I can't even do it. One of the really I so like the theme of this movie the original theme of the movie was like you know just two stoners trying to stop moving and having like comic hijinks. There's actually kind of a theme to this movie and it's fatherhood. Which as I'm watching yeah. this movie I'm like Scott must really dig this because he I dig he, it so much, he's, man. He's really big into like being a dad. I so. was tearing up. I was tearing up. I'm really big into being a dad, or Kevin Smith is? You are. Like, you're okay. super big into being a dad. I am. I, I love being... That's, like, my favorite thing in the world, is being a dad. But I think, and you probably know more than me, because you listen to this podcast more often than I do, I think it's safe to say that Kevin fucking Smith loves being a dad. Well... Like, his daughter is, like, the fucking apple of his eye. Whenever he talks about her, like, in public, he just puts her on a pedestal. And you saw more of this in this movie. Yes, they're talking about Jay and his daughter, but 
it, it, it's all an allegory. It is it is Kevin Smith and his daughter. That's what he means by it. It's it's like it's it is that, but I think it's more Jason Muse and his kid because it, to listen to the podcast, if you if you ever listen to the podcast, you'll know that anytime Jason Muse is ever they're ever together and they're talking about it, one of the things Kevin always talks about is the fact that from a young age Jason Mewes wanted to have a family and he kind of wanted to be a dad but he never thought he was good enough to be a dad well when he got clean he got married and he got clean eventually and stuff like that he ended up having a kid who you right. see in this movie you, he is um, the little girl Amy yes he's the little girl Amy at the, towards the end of the movie and Kevin Smith will talk about like I love being a dad but Jason is like the ultimate father like he adores being a dad like he is like the best dad ever like he has a lot of good interactions with Kevin's daughter Harley but he like his daughter is like the like the most important thing in the world to him so I think it's more along the lines of Jason Mewes because he's such like he loves being a father so much he might love being a father more than Kevin Smith and that's one of the biggest reasons why they that father had played such a big role because it's like I think from it might be like the send off. Like I don't see them make another Jay and Silent Bob movie, but it might have been like the send off for like them as like main characters in like their own personal movie. That Jay in this movie has a daughter that he doesn't know about, and like his daughter's in the movie, and it just has that whole play. Just it's it, it's just it's all about fatherhood, and I think it's more along the lines of Jason Mewes being a father, um, because Ben. What's really cool about it was Ben Affleck came back. Which yeah. I think was probably one that of... scene was great too. Well, like it was the scene where the two of them are sitting down with Ben Affleck and Joey Lauren Adams walks in the room and the little girl. Yeah, that was a powerful scene. That was well written by Kevin Smith. Oh hell yeah, it was absolutely well written by Kevin Smith. Um, I think he ga- he gave him that scene because we've talked about it briefly in the podcast before, but they almost had like a falling out. Him, Kevin Smith and Ben Affleck right. I'm talking about and they had like kind of falling out after one of their earlier movies um, and I think it was one of those things where Kevin Smith thought they had a falling out but Ben Affleck doesn't know why they had they don't talk to each other anymore but after mm-hmm. his heart attack like he Kevin Smith was just making phone calls being like hey come be in my movie hey come be in my movie blah 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 and Ben Affleck he he was able to get him to come back and I I think he wrote him that monologue because Kevin mm-hmm. Smith was so emotional about the fact that Ben Affleck was even going to be in the movie. Man. So he gave him this monologue of like, I'm going to give you this fucking monologue. You're going to make me cry during it. So Yeah. Yeah. I was emotional. I didn't cry during that scene. I cried during other scenes. But yeah. I didn't cry during that scene. But man, it got me in the feels. I was really feeling that scene. It was... <sighs> It was like it was like old Affleck again. It was absolutely. It, it, it was. <laughs> that's my Affleck right there. That's 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 my Affleck. Um, it was a great scene. I I was a big fan of all the different cameos as we were talking about. They had um, Brody came back. Obviously, he's got to come he back. He was good. Every Jason single Lee was good. Um, Diedrich Bader came and, back and, as a and, security and, guard. If, and, and, and to stop you there, stop you there. Sorry. If we do get a mall rats too it's going to have to revolve around brody and oh, jason yeah. lee absolutely and and i think he's setting up for that because you saw in jay and silent bob strike back the brody had opened a comic book shop and they used the secret stash as the filming site for that well now in this movie he had moved out of the secret stash where adam to the mall to the mall. To the mall, son. I feel like that is, that's going to be the setup. Yeah, because absolutely, hundred percent. It has Brody to. Brody had to be in the mall, right? Yeah, absolutely. And they gave us a little taste of that, so now I think that's what we're going to have. I I totally agree with you. I believe that's what it's going to be. Um, there was um, I was a big fan of the fact that first of all, how cool was it that Kevin Smith brought himself into the movie? I, at first, I thought it was going to be a little cringy. <sighs> But I thought it was pretty funny the way that he kind of brought himself into it. So I also heard about that scene, which it's bittersweet. It's bittersweet because Kevin Smith was not supposed to be that role. That was supposed to be Stan Lee. Yeah. Did you hear that? I I did not hear that, but it makes sense when you say it, yeah. That was supposed to be Stan Lee's character. He was supposed to be the one to come out and introduce this and... That's how it was going to be. And Stan Lee was all set to do it. And then 
unfortunately he passed away. That makes sense. So yeah. Kevin Smith had to improvise and he just decided to put himself in that role. It, which, w- it works, I think. It was okay. Yeah, it was okay. He played he played an, out, an even more outlandish version of himself, I think. So I, I get it. I get it. And it's just and it's fine. It's just like movies like that kind of like I, I don't get it because what was it? One of the Oceans movies. Um, I, I know you're Oceans, talking about the first Oceans Twelve. It was one of those where, ones uh, where Julia Roberts' character, who played, you know, oh, George Clooney, Danny's, he played you know his. She, you know who wife. she looks like? You know who she looks yeah, like? Yeah, she looked like. Yeah. Oh, she like, looks what? like Julia. Oh, like, no, you're not gonna put me in there. Oh, it's Julia Roberts. Oh. I was just like, what the fuck? Yeah, that was, <laughs> a, was that like, was really. That's what you're gonna do here? I kind of we felt. I kind of think it we worked getting in this that movie, with though. this movie. I kind of felt like when, it worked more in this movie because it was a comedy. When Harley looks when Harley looks at Silent Bob, and she's like. You know who you kind of look like? I was like, don't do it. Don't pull an Ocean's 12. You're right. <laughs> but because of how outlandish this movie is and all like the different... They have like cartoon sound effects in this movie. I felt like it works a little bit with this movie compared to like Ocean's 12. It might have been 13. I don't remember, I don't remember which, which Ocean's, one, but it was, it was unfortunate. Um, but uh, I, as a podcast fan of all the different uh, Smodcasts, podcast mm-hmm. i was a big fan of all the cameos that they played um they had the comic book men in there that was cool yes they did um they had ming the... was reading that poem about yeah comic book men yeah. <laughs> i loved it um they had the they had the original cast of clerks on a panel in black and white in black and that white, was funny yeah. um i i was a big fan i i love ralph garman a lot and i'm really happy that he was in it so he played the um underhill guy who is screaming about yes. his credit card yes and here's so here's a little a little easter egg that i absolutely loved that probably the lay person wouldn't pick up on there's a movie that i love from the 80s that kevin smith must love because he referred to it in mall rats a couple times underhill was the name the Chevy Chase's character used as his alias in the movie Fletch. Really? Yes. <laughs> yes. And I like picked up on that. I'm like, because I fucking love the movie Fletch. I might have heard him talking about it a few times, so you might be right. Yeah, like <laughs> it, it. It makes total sense. Um, I know that scene with Ralph Garman. I I guess goes on a little longer. I guess he does a lot more with it, um, but they didn't put it in the movie. And apparently, they were talking about the last Hollywood of Babylon that they were going to release that deleted scene for like because Ralph does his own podcast called the Ralph Report, which I subscribe to. And I guess um, if he has like different levels of su- subscribers, and I guess they're going to release that scene for like certain levels of the subscribers, something like that. So I guess he goes on a lot more. I don't know. I was a big fan of it. Um, yeah, I will let you know if I can. Uh, Mark Bernardin was in there, who is uh, his co-host on Fat Man on Batman. Or um, who was he playing? I he played uh, this character called Sleepy Blunt Man. I'm looking at the IMDb right now. Oh, okay. I know, I know he was in there. So um, he was just one of the the Comic Con cosplayers. Yeah, yeah. So he was one of okay. those guys. Um, I would go to Chronic Con. That looked like fun. Hundred percent. I was a huge fan <laughs> of seeing Diedrich Bader in there as a security guard again. I yes, the second yes. I saw the security guard, I was like, "Here we go! It's got to be him! It cannot not be him!" Um, yeah. Melissa Manoise was in there, which was really cool. I knew she was going to be in there, but she plays Supergirl in the yes. new Supergirl series. One character you did not see in there. I noticed at the end of the movie, I had to look it up. Who is the one character that we should have seen in there we did not see in there? Of all uh, there was one. There was one that came to my mind. I don't know if we're thinking about the same one, but I wanted to see Will Ferrell as Officer Willenhalling. You're right. I forgot about him. That's not the one <laughs> I I'm thinking to of. I see him in there. I, I, it's not what I'm thinking of, but you're right. I'm surprised I didn't see Will Ferrell in there at, at all for anything. Um, <laughs> the one I'm thinking of that I'm surprised you didn't catch up on, where was Randall Graves? You're right. We did not see Randall Graves. I, I well, think... was he, was he, I'm sure he was on that panel. <clears throat> nope. He was Jeff not, Anderson he, was probably sitting on that panel. He, I just, he that wasn't was a real movie at all. Scene. He wasn't. He was in the movie at all. I looked it up. He was not in the I movie. I wonder why. Um, from what I understand, um, he, there was a bit of a falling out there. Really? Because he, he's supposed to be in the next Clerks movie, but there was a bit of a falling out after Clerks 2 because I guess 
him and the character the name Elias. He wasn't in there either. I guess him and Elias didn't get paid or didn't get fully paid for Clerks 2. Um, so there was a bit of a falling out or something like that. So they was like, I'm not going to do it. I guess they settled. They like Kevin Smith, like they fixed it or whatever. They fixed whatever problem there was. That's I read a brief article about it that somebody spec really somebody said. that's shocking. So that's the I mean, reason that why yeah. So that they doesn't sound like Kevin Smith at all. No, I can't imagine it was Kevin Smith. It's got to be the company that did it. It, it. it can't be Kevin Smith. But um, that's him and Elias were both not in this movie. Which I'm oh, there's like one of the two characters that you didn't see mm-hmm. that were in the other ones. Um, so well, you can't have you can't do. You can't do Clerks 3 unless you have Dante and Randall. No, so. absolutely not. 100% yeah, no. Fix, fix that. Fix that quick or that movie's never happening. Absolutely. I, I think it is fixed. I think he it did sign on for doing Clerks 3, but I just think it was like a brief um, kind of thing. Um, I was, a, you know what I was a huge fan of? And here's what my, it's not a criticism, but I think I would have done it differently if I was in the room with Kevin Smith smoking weed and writing this movie. I was a fan of Matt Damon coming back as Loki. Yeah, yeah. which was shocking to me. That was but very the cool. the born identity thing was kind of fun. It was very cool. Um, they did this thing where when they reintroduced Matt Damon as Loki, where it almost seemed like he was going to narrate the movie from then on. And because he did it like like an over narration for whenever they were showing yeah. up at movies, and then they just kind of stopped. If I were Kevin Smith, I would have thought about maybe having Loki ch- chime in from time to time with like those quirky, uh, kind of cringy narration kind of things. Uh, yeah, at very least, at the end of the movie, like the credits are rolling or having after credits or something of him wrapping it up. Him yeah. wrapping it up, and then Alanis Morissette making an appearance as god (laughs) that would be cool yeah um but it was cool to see like that character you're like whoa yeah he's back uh yeah that was that was a surprise to me method man and uh red man incredible incredible so funny i love i loved it so much so let me just tell you first of all you know me being a big wu-tang fan and I also love the movie How High. So does but Kevin it's Smith. Not... <laughs> I fucking love Popcorn Player. <laughs> he was holding up a sign. Said, I need money. I said, shit, me too. We've been making it ever since. <laughs> so I just I love that movie. And it doesn't get a lot of doesn't get a lot of clout, if you will. Then the fact that they paid it homage in this movie was so great to me. So great. I, Red Man had, like, he had one of the funniest lines. This is a very quotable movie. Like, I see myself it's, watching it again. All of his movies are quotable. I see myself watching it again and trying to, like, remember some of the quotes. But, like, it's it's just one of those kind of movies I... I'm glad you liked it. I was worried that you were going to look at oh. it and, like... View it as in it. like some of his other movies he's, he's done recently. Be like, uh, it was okay, but it's not like get mad Because here's something that I so I love the Austin Powers movies. Yeah, and I get it. I understand what they are because they recycle the same jokes in every movie, and a lot of people are annoyed by that. But guess what, Adam? I absolutely love it. And there were a lot of new things in this film, but there were a lot of recycled jokes. Oh and yeah, I'm, I'm okay with that. I loved it. Did you? Do you remember when we were talking a long time ago in one of the episodes? What's the difference between a reboot and a remake? It was hilarious yes. that um, that was a big subject in this movie. The difference between a reboot and a remake, and I was like, there we go, right there, boom. Yes, yes, it was. It was, and, and we had this conversation almost one entire podcast episode you and I arguing over the difference between a reboot and a remake. And I don't think we ever came to a consensus. And they talk about that, like the whole movie. And I don't even think they ever came to a consensus. <laughs> no, I don't know. And, and, and to me, after watching it, I feel like this movie was more of a sequel than it was a reboot or a remake. Yeah, absolutely. hundred percent. If you think about it, yes, they're trying to stop the reboot of the movie and a lot of the same jokes are recycled. A lot of the same plot lines are recycled. But the movie opens up. The last movie we had in the VSQ universe was Clerks 2. 
And we saw how that movie ended. Dante and Randall now on the quick stop. And the movie opens with Dante pulling up to work, going to unlock the shutters, like right where that movie left off. Yeah. So in turn, I guess this is a sequel, right? Kind of, yeah, maybe. <laughs> I mean, this is definitely like 18 years later after it, but yeah. Um, right. Oh my God, is Clerk just too 18 years old? Mm, I'm talking about Jane Silent Bob Strike Back. Oh yeah, that... Clerks 2 was in the 2000s, though. It's probably... It's getting up there. Maybe 15. It's maybe getting 10, up there, yeah, so... 10, 15, yeah. Dude, I want to chow down some hater tots. <laughs> Fred Armiston was good. <laughs> so you, you approve. You approve of the new Jason. I Silver love it. Movie. I want to watch it again. I want... Chris. Kristen loves Kevin Smith. She loves all of his films. Mm. She is going to adore this movie. That's who I'm concerned about, though, because I feel like she might criticize it because it's not like Clerks, you know? She's going to love it. She's okay. going to love it. That's good. She's going to love it, and I can't wait to watch it with her. We have to ship the kids off somewhere because oh, they can't. Uh, definitely. They can't be around for this movie. And with the quarantine happening, I don't know when that's going to happen, but hopefully sooner rather than later. All right. Um,. Well, that's our talk for Clerks 2, and with that comes the end of the episode. Yeah, I knew. I knew we were going to talk so long about Clerks... Not Clerk, I said Clerks 2. About Jay and Silent Bob reboot. Yeah. I knew we were going to talk the duration, but it deserves it. It deserves it. Um, Scott, why don't you let the people know how they can get a hold of free distraction whether they like kevin smith's new stuff or if they prefer the old stuff uh why don't you let them know how they can get a hold of us and let us know and while you're doing that i'm going to use the restroom fair enough okay so there's a lot of different ways you can get a hold of us uh you can shoot us an email at for your distraction at gmail.com uh you can find us on social media we are on facebook you can search for For Your Distraction on Facebook. Find our site. Like us on there. We post all the links to all of our latest shows and a lot of share a lot of other cool pop culture-related articles on there. Uh, we are also on Twitter. Search for us on there and follow us. You can tweet us at Podcast FYD. There's a bunch of different ways you can listen to the show. We are on SoundCloud. You can search for For Your Distraction and follow us on SoundCloud. We are on iTunes for all you Apple people like me. So you can search for For Your Distraction, subscribe to us. You can rate us, write us a little review on there. That would be great. Uh, we are a member of the Be Real Podcasting Network. Uh, you can listen to us on our sister station, the Movie Guys Podcast. You can search for them on Podbean. So pull up Podbean, search for Movie Guys Podcast. They'll have all their podcasts, all our podcasts, and a bunch of other great podcasts that are in the network with us. And you can also find us on YouTube by searching for the Movie Guys Podcast. And same deal there. You can find all these great shows there. How was your little tinkle? Um, you know what? It was good, and I washed my hands 20 seconds. 20 seconds. Good work. 20 seconds. Good work. Oh, I got more movies to watch. I guess we'll have to talk, talk about them next, next week, I guess. Yeah, we should have a lot of shit to talk about when it comes to entertainment next week, because what else are we going to do? Fair enough. All right, folks. All right, well, thanks for joining us. Stay safe. Adam, stay healthy, everyone. Definitely. And we'll, we'll talk to you next week. Later. Thank you.